Hi everyone, Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group weekly update for the week ending November the 18th, 2022. I, pretty interesting news uh, uh, yesterday and today. So yesterday, uh, Bullard uh, from uh, the, the Federal Reserve uh, FOMC came out and was discussing uh, how he was very hawkish on the uh, interest rates. And so that, that uh, you know, I put the market in it. It's, it's a. It occurs to me that in, in, I remember the. I remember a time when markets traded on fundamentals and market traded on on technicals. You know, uh, and some mixture of those. Not just talking heads driving the market absent any further evidence. And so uh, that that's kind of a di disturbing uh, in its own right. And, but uh, if we look at the data, really where the tension lies here is well. Look. look the Dow right now is on an uptrend, okay? It's an established uptrend and it's it's doing well, okay? It's holding its own. Actually, all of these indexes have held their own from last Thursday's rally high. Maybe just letting the uh, the averages catch up a little bit uh, on the technical side. And then next week's gonna be a short week, you know? So uh, most people will be uh, uh, not, tra volume will be light. And most most people uh, generally on, on these kind of uh, conditions, it tends to go up, not, not seriously down. Uh, anything can happen, I'm not predicting, but uh, that's generally, you know, wouldn't be surprised at that. So if you look at just the sign that the other two indexes are down with very well-established downtrends, uh, the NASDAQ even worse than the S&P 500 uh, versus the Dow being the only one looking optimistic with an uptrend up there kind of leads you to uh, make your own conclusions from that. Not the two out of three things, but the components of each, okay, of each index. Then when we look at the sectors, okay, looking at the one week because the market's changing, all right? So we can't really look at the long term because you got a blended market. So the tide's changing a little bit. What we're seeing here on the last one week, money moving into uh, defensive sectors, okay? Consumer staples, utilities, health cares, the usual suspects uh, that are, are uh, you know, defensive posture leading into, uh, you know, tough times or even a recession. And then when we look at the, at the yield curve, the degree that it is inverted is just stunning. Okay, so um, the... The yields on the, on the high end are far uh, out, outweighing the yields on the 10-year. And uh, even worse is that the spread between the 210 is, uh, this morning, it was about, we've got about 20 uh, minutes left in the trading day. The spread this morning was, was 70 basis points. 50 to 70 basis points is unbelievable to me, uh, but that's what it is. And so... The kind of you put all these things together, and that kind of portends, you know, uh, maybe maybe not so good times. And all of this is really driven by the Fed and whether or not the markets have all of the data priced in uh, in terms of rate rate hikes, and the Fed saying we, that we need more. So let's let's take a, a deep dive on that just for uh, you know like sixty seconds or so. Let's get into that analysis of the and take and take a quick a quick peek at a, at a chart that we've created uh, based upon the uh, st louis federal reserves or commonly known as the fred and their their uh, analysis of the department of labor consumer price index data and take a look at this uh, inflation okay as i said previously this uh, data the source from uh, the st louis fed okay and what I've done here, if you just take the raw data, it's very hard to visualize. But what we've done here is uh, analyze the year over year, okay, because that's that's what is really driving the FOMC, and then a rate of you know year over year inflation. This is this is straight up headline inflation CPI, okay, and then and then the rate of change. And so the argument that Wall Street analysts are making right now is like is that if we continue to uh, project forward the trend that's currently in place, we're going to be fine. And so the Fed doesn't need to jump into the 5 to 7% range. Uh, Bullard seems to think that uh, we definitely need to do that. I guess I should say Mr. Bullard, but anyway, that we need to do that in order to, uh, in, you know, hurry the thing up, the rate of change. If we look at the bottom green line, you don't have to have the raw data, the numbers, but just looking at the shape of the line, you can see that the, that, that the rate of change has recently been increased 
but it is tapering off but by by the same contrast because of those big rate hikes you see that the that the top line which is the actual inflation data is is steepened its descent so that's picking up and so what the market is saying is hey look just go with what you've got we've already got that price in and and the and the inflation is coming down okay so forward looking data more but uh fred and and, and i'm bullied from the from I, I he may be from the fred i, I don't from, you know in st louis there uh it, but the uh the other lady is from boston the collins and she came on this morning and said you know what maybe uh, the the employment data can be uh, you know reconciled and it comes down on its own without us having to be so aggressive so that was seen as good news and brought up but as the day is worn on that's kind of uh, softened as well and so we'll see which way it goes but it, it there doesn't seem like the tension is uh, whether the uh, Fed continues steep rate hikes and throws uh, too much in there and brings the because they're looking at backwards data or listens to the markets a little bit and says look at let's combine some of these data and soften up uh, on the uh, the very hawkish uh, rate hikes that uh, Mr. Buller were saying to get in the five to seven percent so that's where the tension lies. What do we do about it? We trade the markets. So our models have been holding up fairly well and, and, and being robust against the volatility and while still trying to track, uh, still seeking to track upside gains uh, as, as they present themselves. But here's what's opening up. This is a new window of opportunity that we're exploring with clients in terms of safer returns and that is in the fixed income side. So there are a lot of opportunities out there right now to get uh, take advantage of these uh, interest rates and get these four to six, uh, probably five, I, I didn't mean to say that, I meant to say uh, uh, three to four to the high fours, mid four ranges, percentiles, uh, returns, okay? And, and, and so if you want, and, and without, a, without a long commitment period, okay? So if you want to explore that, don't hesitate to reach out to us uh, and uh, contact us. Reach out to us. Uh, we're easily found on the web by uh, assetguidancegroup.com or uh, info at assetguidancegroup.com. Send us an email. We'll respond to you. If you're interested in that, just set up. And if you're already a client, just set up an appointment and let's explore these options to you. Okay. All right. I went a little bit longer than, than I intended to, but hey, it's good information, I hope. And uh, I also hope that you guys all have a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. All the best from us at Asset Guidance Group, from Jared and I and all our families, to you and all your families, okay? The best of the seasons as we start this new holiday time of year. See you next time.